Welcome back everyone to another Company of Heroes 2 replay cast. This time we are going to have a um, nice 2v2 sent in by Vasa, although he's not here. Where are you Vasa? What happened? Anyway, uh, it is his friends I guess, uh, Mar Rakosovsky and Kamano Man, or Kaman Man, Man, Jesus Christ. And <laughs> the opponents are gonna be Anteria and Brosfras. And it's two Wehrmacht versus two Soviets, so it is a classic matchup on crossing in the woods. Yes, yes, my friend, crossing in the woods. That's how it works in real life. Anyway, um, yeah, not much to say. Let's, see. Let's wait for these players to do things. Now, why did these guys have no bulletins? I guess they were like, they had been playing tournament or something, so they had no bulletins on them. Oh well. Uh, and yeah, there was some first engagements, just everyone just kind of eyeing each other, really not going and committing to any fight, but yeah, I mean, engineers, fighting with MG. They're gonna get flanked by Grenadiers and have to run away. MG does not get the shoot at them, but they're in negative cover, so they take damage. It's fine though, because here comes Grenadiers, and so they get to run away. Oh, the MG though has to run away, although they really don't need to, and Maxim is around, which is going to protect the engineers, so that's pretty good. Meantime, we see that the center, uh, there's just some pioneers. Wow, they actually managed to snipe a model off the crossroads at long range, which is uh, pioneers, that is a good result. Brassfrost wins for a mortar and green, whereas his uh, friend over here on the right, Terry, went for a Years. And the mortar right now is paying off in that it's kind of keeping uh, commands conscripts from just standing too still, being too comfortable in cover. We'll see though, we'll see. Nice flank from these kind of commands, and of course back in before you can start looking quickly the maximum Back into the building. In the meantime, the Great Gears are just pushing back these conscripts, and it seems like they are the allies on the right are not going to have the best of days. Gonna need to escape back to the base. But with the MG now safely positioned in the building near the patch, they're gonna be fine. So they don't need to. You know, they, they don't need to push them too hard, the Germans. They can just take the VP and fuel, and they're gonna be fine. Same thing there is happening on the left side, it is the Allies there that are moving in. So the left side is going to go to the allies and the right side is going to go pretty decisively on both counts. Although the right side is uh, not as secure for the Germans as the left is for the allies. So let's see if uh, Rakosovsky can come in and come back into his infantry and recapture at least some of his points. The MG42 here is ready to set up and fire, so he's going to set up actually in a very, very good position. He can uh, really suppress down these infantry squads. And now he's going to be able to well, kind of afraid that his MG42 can hold alone, and it cannot, because here comes a flank from the conscript from Kaman, and also a second flank from more conscripts, going to kind of slow down the approaching Grand Gears. And yeah, so they have to run away, and now the Soviets can just flood the infantry on the extreme right and capture some points. Well, uh, Brasras not going for any battle phases and it's very going for battle phase one, so this means the Germans are still kind of a little bit of a little They're not really trying to get out any major uh, vehicles or units out yet. And so they're just going to try to rely on the tier one for now. And it's kind of working as a uh, conscript squad. As long as uh, their MG position is on point, they're going to be in a good spot. But of course, it's crossing the blood, so these players have time. They can just hold one side and hold one VP. And they're going to be fine. Their are just kind of slugging it out with some cons. Cons have to you know, run away back into the building, which is understandable. Oh no, here comes the Ura. Oh, nice. He actually uh, merged up his conscript 
top engineer squad to not let it die. The problem is, one extra Oswald died, so he lost the Oswald squad. Still, that is a very, very good tactic that you can use with your Flamer engineers, because Flamer engineers, of course, only four men, relatively weak uh, in terms of just tankiness. So they die relatively quickly, but to keep them in the field more, or rather to keep them in the field Flamer, guy, you can just use your conscripts to replenish them on the field. Still, you, you need to be careful because, as always, merge can make conscript squads, it just happened. And the Germans uh, making, making themselves show on the Enemy right forces side. are securing our territory. Right Not really quite sure if that was correct. Left side is still under the allied thumb. And, uh, well, that's... That's a bit of barbed wire, all right? I'm not sure. Yeah, he definitely doesn't want the Germans, you know, getting in here too easily. They're gonna need to get it around, I guess. And yeah, as I said, the mortar is very, very useful. Just push back these conscripts and make sure that they can't stay in cover for too long. Also destroying the sandbags, so just make it harder for the allies to you know, come back and dig in on the left. So that is good, but the allies are back and forthing on the right. So yeah, I mean, you take something, you lose something it seems. Come on man though, trying to uh, break this kind of stalemate, or rather repetition pattern, and uh, he's trying to get a T-70 light tank on the field. Which would be a good choice, I would say. I mean, the Axis still haven't gone for any tank guns, so he's very much still in time to make use of the T-70 and do some good work with it. Um, there's a half drop on the right, and it's, yeah, it's upgrading the flame projectors, as uh, was probably you know, uh, very obvious. So now the Allies know that they have to deal with some German vehicles, but I mean, the flame half drop. Most of anything can do with that. And here comes the C70. That was pretty deadly also because he is uh, able to get into the fight right off the bat, right after he comes out of the uh, off map. Straight into the action, almost destroying the Grandier squad. Incredibly lucky that Grandier squad did not die to the C70 and these conscripts. MG also taking some fire from the 45mm main gun. He's simply eating a Panzerfaust is the only reason why that squad managed to escape with its life. And it seems like on the extreme right, the Germans are trying to make a big push happen with their, uh, you know, half-track and infantry. And of course, with the half-track being upgraded, it cannot be used to reinforce anymore. But it is not going to be needed as the Allies abandon the whole area. The right side is also German right about now, so this is uh, going to mean a lot of resources coming in for them, at least Meantime, and here comes D70. He has uh, repaired. He's got the being fascist of written on the side. He's crushed the fascist or destroyed the fascist. So he's gonna be ready to do some of that. Comes in, finds it in the 42. Yeah, the 42 does not stand a chance without veteran C1. Uh, for those uh, arm piercing rounds. Of course, though, as much as that zero machine can stand a chance against the 270, 270 needs to be quite careful about so veteran C1 machines. So, uh, the second machine gun will be a bit of a, a bit of a dangerous beast. And right now, the machine gun is trying to stop this infantry push, and uh, he will turn around and target the conscripts, but it is too late as the, the, the second conscript spot has already kind of uh, veered off to the side and get behind there. Mortar does get uh, decrewed, but then recrewed by a Grenadier spot, which barely escapes out of there, and the mortar crew, the new mortar crew, rather, will get back to base for acquisition. That's good. It's good for the Germans. It saves them a whole lot of trouble if that mortar had been, uh, you know, stolen by the Allies. Pack 40, uh, a bit, little bit late from Ontario, but it is a good choice nonetheless. Um, and of course, he will need that to at least keep the C70 at bay. So that is a really good thing. Allies, of course, are trying to artillery barrage against this free. Working out! Ah, 
STKFC not really yeah no not really having the best of impact only four kills so he's been using that very defensively in the area and wow that's a nice flank it's behind the machine gun but there's nothing that could follow up on this or hmm, comes the conscripts I guess there is something that can follow up also it this is um, Forcing the AT gun to reposition, which is of course very, very good because it allows the T70s to come in and do its thing. Uh, once again, the game is no HP. So far, Command Man has not been very lucky with his chases. Oh, but the AT gun. Wait. Oh, oh, that's an AT gun from Brassras. Well, that surprised me. And uh, yeah, the AT gun gets the first shot in. Will it be able to get the second shot in? The Wow, it does, but it does not kill the 70 That is surprising. That is very surprising. So T-70 escapes to fight another day, or to spot another day, as, uh, you know, late game, veteran C3 T-70 plus, maybe veteran C3 actually. No, veteran C3 T-70 plus recon mode, very, very good. What the fuck is this supposed to be? <laughs> I think some pioneers had their way here. This match is not in the best position I've ever seen. He's, he's basically flanked himself. Um, yeah, he's gonna have to run away. Anyway, uh, allies, well, we have that Rukosovsky is going for more anti tank, and his first anti tank that he's dying to order is dead to a mortar. He's got tier 3 as well, but he hasn't gotten anything out of that, so he might be waiting for tier 4. He's gotten the resources for tier 4, so I'll go into that. In the meantime, uh, Tank 3 Battalion Command still doing its thing for Command Man, but other than P70, he hasn't purchased anything there, so not, you know, not the best thing ever. Mm. 76mm field gun. Dying. Comes the conscript strength and into tank made on half track. He will succeed. Already go out of the way, so he's not really going to be in any danger. No AT gun on the right, we need that the T7 can of course get some free shots in on these very gears. Gets that two as the AT gun moves up. T7 will probably run away or go somewhere else. So it's still, again, kind of a stalemate. One wipe for the Nazis on the left, but other than that, like, both sides have mostly full strength when it comes to top cap units on the field and veterancy. And they're basically at the same levels of teching as well. I mean, we've got Battle Phase 2 coming up for Antaria, and uh, no Battle Phase 2 for Brassras. So, never mind. I guess Brassras is behind, but what could he want to do? Could he want to get a Command Tank? Notice that uh, yeah, he's got a tiger from this assault support doctrine that he can uh, get in the late game. And he's got the elephant plus command tank fortified armor. So he might be going for the command tank. He's not the only thing about a phase 2. And he's got 230 fuel in the bag. He's like, I've forgotten about it, and I don't think so, because Ross is a pretty damn good player, so we wouldn't forget about that. And uh, yeah, I think he's going for some, he's going for some kind Enemy of call forces are securing our territory. Speaking of call -ins, the first doctrinal pick it is the guard's mortar. Come on, man. So of course, uh, guard rifleman. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. And later on, T3485s. What has? Uh, you no, know, what is there to not like about guard mortar formation? Not much. We're gonna see probably a 120 millimeter mortar soon enough as well. That would be pretty good. He's still fighting it out on every side of the map. So we've got, again, relatively equal footing when it comes to map control and units on the field from all sides. Although Rukosovsky has lost quite a bit. But he has just you know, made, that, made that up with a T-34-76. Of course, pretty good. And, uh, wait, what? <laughs> Why is he showing that as still being Rukosovsky's unit? I have no idea. They're not firing on it. So I guess, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. 
Doesn't matter which squad has, uh, you know, the MG42. Because the damage it does is the same regardless of who puts it up. Okay, well, it seems like the counterattack attempts from Come On Man are not having, a, you know, any bit of success. T70 just. Uh, Fire for some reason, but yeah, needs to get prepared. And here comes the flank from T34, kind of a flank, really. Um, of course, the pack gun can just kind of turn around and start to fire on him. Need to be careful though, because there's a Panzerfaust also coming in with the pack shooting him. This is not very good. He's just kind of standing still, which very, very. Uh, wait, he did not. He did not Panzerfaust. That is a bad decision. Looks like uh, Rakosovsky did lay a bit of a surprise on the right side, but he's really not having a good time. There's too many Germans on the right for him, and uh, ooh, yeah, that was the end of the Grenadier squad, I think. Well done. Uh, so that leaves a little less Germans than it used to be. He's also got the Incendiary Artillery Barrage, and he has decided to, uh, you know, put Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics, so again. Senior artillery barrage can just kind of fall down on the machine gun. AT gun trying to scramble away, but um, that will still leave the machine gun in the middle of the flames, so he will have to reposition the machine gun. We are losing a Taking a lot of damage and now getting flanked by conscripts. So that's not very good, and that allows the allies just to uh, come back around and take the side of the map. You know, this bugged AT gun might just be uncrewable now. I wonder if. Yeah, right, because I can't click abilities because I'm an observer. That's, a, that's kind of weird. <laughs> nice flank, by the way. Uh, so let's check out the overall situation. Just do a bit of a pause. And then I'll speed forward a little bit. So we have Brass Rass with 210 fuel. So what has he spent it on? Most likely just, yeah, he's upgrading Battle Phase 3. So as it turns out, he was just kind of waiting to see what was happening, and now he's probably gonna go for Heavy Panzer Corps with his Pioneers back at base, and with, uh, you know, plenty of fuel to spare, he should be able to field something out of that very quickly. Uh, accepting that, he's got just a standard German force. Uh, heavy Panzer for Corps is also coming for Antaria, so no P4s, going straight to those Panthers, straight to those Brum Bears, maybe even Panzer Bears for both uh, players. No Doctrine picked from either guy, and uh, of course, uh, we have the allies, we've got Rokosovsky with tier 4, tier 4 can get himself a KV-8 fling for a tank now that he picked uh, guards rifle, uh, shock, shock rifle, frontline tactics, and uh, yeah, that's pretty good, that's pretty good, but I'm not sure, he might just want to wait for the S2 heavy tank, because he's got 12 uh, CPs, and the S2 is only 13. So he might just want to go ahead and wait for the S2 heavy tank, which might just uh, might just turn around the right side completely. Make it a whole, a lot, a whole, a whole, hell of a lot easier for the Soviets to win that side. And of course, we also have uh, Command Man with the T70, which is still alive at three, uh, but uh, yeah, his main problem is the Despite the fact that he's got those guards recommend, he's wasting 800 manpower in bank, really floating that. No real reason, so that's not the best. He can uh, spend some of that, he'd be in a great spot. And here comes a Katrusha just to spend some of those resources. Not a bad choice, in fact, a pretty good one. It's gonna help deal with the AT gun and machine guns. And, you know, without mentioning trying to, of course, uh, <clears throat> Trying to, uh, I guess, wipe out Grenadiers every once in a while. So, East 2 Heavy Tank is now unlocked for Rokosovsky. He does not have enough resources to buy one. 
this AT gun is still kind of fun. It's gonna bug the entire game. Does it? Does it have a sun range? No, I need to wait until uh, Ruckus Up's units are all away so that I can <laughs> see if it's actually providing my sight. And it looks like it's actually gonna eat edge tank grenades as soon as it comes out in the field. And the Katusha Barrage and the Torse de Grey basically Ross Frost's infantry. So that's pretty good for him. And uh, now. I just got the Granat for Mortar. Stolen, of course. Pretty good. Yeah. So allies being very aggressive, pushing up some shots for all the teammates. And the second Panther is on the field this time for Ontario. Interesting. Uh, honestly, getting that Panther on the field. When your ally had already gone on for a panther, I'm not sure if it was really needed because the allies right now have a T34, 76, and a T7. So not exactly the biggest force of tanks in the world. Nor the most dangerous. So we'll see. We'll see. Guards is kind of getting kind of mowed now by the MG42 there. Just getting Rajev in here. And uh, ooh, but they're about to not have fun. Patricia Rockets just slamming into the face of that machine and crew. Almost wiping it out. Maybe wiping it out with the uh, salvo. No, it just barely survives. Camper decides to charge in, however, past the AT gun. I'm not sure exactly at what, but he does find an SU 85. So gets behind it, and actually the AT gun pushed up and was able to get the last finishing shot on the SU 85, so that was very, very well done. And T7 also dies, anytime he can also escape the six, uh, this free 76mm anti tank gun, but he escapes straight into a mine, so he does die. And uh, I feel like that was a relatively decent trade for the Allies, as much as the resources probably cheaper for the Germans, yeah, definitely cheaper for the Germans than the Allies, because like 210, right? No, sorry, 200 uh, fuel worth of vehicles, whereas the Panthers are 175 from the Wehrmacht, 185. And of course, two tanks generally always is more manpower than one tank, no matter what the tank. <laughs> does want to tell you some stories about its manpower cost, but yeah, despite all of that, yeah, nothing too important is happening. I can talk about it. Despite all of that, I still say that losing that big panther is such a big deal for Ross Ross Ross. Yeah, sure, he lost an SU-85, come on, man, but the SU-85 did his job. It killed the panther. So yeah. Damn, once again, very, very close to wiping out two Grandeur squads that are better. Those Grandeurs go down. Had a battle on the left, here. maybe not entirely shift, but it would definitely take a bit of a turn. Because what the Axis are relying on on this side of the map really is their infantry and machine gun firepower. So just MG42s, MG42s, MG42s. If the veterancy on the MG, MG crews and on the vet free grenadiers goes away, well then the guard riflemen and the conscripts are going to have a much easier time dealing with them. So this uh, infantry dependent map control that the Germans have on the left, this infantry dependent supremacy, would maybe not completely go away, but very much shift. And so it would help greatly for the Allies in their quest to equalize the VPs which has been going okay so far. The Germans are only 10 to 15 points ahead of them, but still. Of course, one other great tool uh, to make that fuller equalization happen is the Katusha. Actually, there is a second Katusha on the field, this time from Human Man. And uh, Rakosovsky almost has enough fuel for his S2 head tank. That is very, very good to see. And that will definitely turn the right side. Because, yeah, sure, Panther versus S2. Now, Panther is weaker. 
but um, you know, it can it can it can put up a fight. Too. Problem here is is though that uh, you know the big S2 can help out against the infantry a lot better than the tank can help out against the infantry. So it would be a much better infantry support vehicle for the Allies than the is for the Germans. So when it comes to map control, that is of course very very important. However, they need to be careful. There are mines. There are mines all over the place. Maybe all over the place, but there are mines. Also, another thing is that uh, the Allies have this T-3476 on this side, so Rakosovsky has just an additional tool that he can use against the Panther. Now, of course, um, one way that... That was a nice shot. Uh, one way that the T-34 can be very useful, of course, he does run into a mine, not the most useful thing ever, but one of the ways the T-34 could have been useful was the ram, so that was something that the Panther, I feel like, should have been a little bit afraid of. Uh, you now only the pack gun is kind of saving the from the, the clutches of the S2, but the pack has to escape because there's, of course, glorious shock troops charging in with the Papa Flower 17 guns and uh, heading down these pack 40 crews. Although MG42 Pinto Mountain is uh, doing its own work on the most part, sorry, on the shock troops as we speak. So that's kind of okay, and the S2 will have to escape back to the pastures. So that last engagement going pretty well uh, for the Allies when it comes to positioning and map control, but they do lose more in terms of resources than the Germans did. So the trade goes the Germans' way because they did kill that uh, team of 476. Grumbear on the field on the left. That's not, yeah, that's not the best choice, but it's not a bad choice either. Very helpful against the Allied infantry. And uh, now there's C3485s on the field, so it's going to need to be careful, but that's exact, exactly what packs are for. And so, pack supported by Brobear or Brobear supported by pack, depending on the uh, viewpoint on all of this. It's not that bad, as you can see. Uh, whenever the cost of to do anything through the pack, the Brobear can just kind of easily shoot them away. Is that a big push? It's dead, it's a big push. Kind of. Um, the right side is now being basically consolidated by the Allies, and the left kind of consolidated by the Germans. I'm still very much skeptical about the ability of Brassrest to hold this left hand side. Maybe not permanently, but. Just in general. And so. I'm more leaning towards the Allies right about now, especially because they also have this very nice S2 Super Heavy. So that is, of course, very nice because this is an all-round great unit. It's gonna have enough firepower to deal with both the Panthers and the infantry. And it's also gonna be, of course, very, very tanky. So it's gonna be an all-around great jack of all trades for the Allies, whereas the Germans really are lacking this kind of unit. They have the Grom Bear that's great against the infantry. But they don't have anything that's gonna be good against both. That was some friendly firing half, by the way, by the S2. But yeah, they lack something that's gonna be great at being versatile, at being uh, just in general a unit that you can throw wherever, whenever you expect it to you know, make a good showing for itself. They're gonna need to be very careful about how they use the units, especially if they're more exp uh, experienced than expensive ones. And the anti tank gun line that they're kind of relying on on the left hand side is very vulnerable, of course, because of the presence of two shot rockets and also because there's incendiary artillery barrages. The Rakosovsky does not have enough munitions to use them. Like, what the Allies can simply do is, once they make a big push, they can use their artillery to at least temporarily shut down these packs. And that would be very, very dangerous for them there, because what if afterwards, then, uh, 3485, maybe with the buddy, maybe with the S2 in support, comes in, maybe supported by a marked vehicle, which, uh, come on, man, can use this got plenty of uh, munitions. Well, it would be pretty bad. Big 
and the barrage on the right. Not going to have the best effects, but hey, at least the allies can uh, claim that they have this relatively under control. But uh, it looks like they're going to lose the machine gun. This two actually is uh, it's lacking an engine, so it can't really come in and uh, spar with the Panther. Bit of an, it's a bit at a disadvantage, so I'm gonna need to be careful. Here comes uh, the conscripts. We are losing a sector. The enemy has destroyed an anti-tank gun. The AT gun is still there. It does have line of sight. This dude is just such a boss. Look at this AT gun. He's a bit of a boss now, is he? Err. Why? What? I do not have the thing selected. Go away. Okay. He's a bit of a boss, this AT gun. He's doing his thing. It's so Ontario. What is he gonna go for? Crossroads. What is he gonna go for? So he's gone for a Panther, which was most of his resources remaining. I wonder what he's gonna wait. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Like, the Germans not taking any doctrine is interesting. I guess they're just going for the low look equivalent in coming to Pierce too. Instead of the no look, no look throw, it's the no doctrine to be seen. I don't know, man. It doesn't look all that good for them because right now they're going to lose their AT gun. They're also uh, just receiving rockets to the face. Not that great. And here comes the flame, flame engineers. They're going to make these grenadiers burn. And uh, we need the path, the bench free path, to save the window from certain destruction by the T 34 and 5. Charging in the open field against these two, not really the best thing ever. Um, some rockets, not really enough. Okay, these Panzer Rivers are not really having the best of results. We have nine plus two plus, let's see how many kills it gets this time. One, no, zero. So it's 11 kills on the Axis side for those two Panzer Whereas the Trusha, we have 18 plus 12, so 30 right now. That's about to, about to count up as another barrage slams into the German lines and actually takes out the Venturi anti tank gun crew, which leaves the Brunberg completely open. But the Germans are just lucky because the T 34 85 is slowly repairing. So that's good for them. In the meantime, the Allied infantry is going to take the opportunity to because there's no MGs to push up. Get kind of slammed by the Burn Bear that's too famous in Burn Bear. It's not enough. Here comes the Panther. He has seen an opportunity. I think he's going for the Katrusha. There are three of them huddling all the way around the base. And I think this is a great opportunity for the Panther to deal with all of them. He misses the first shot. But that's very, very unfortunate. T3045 is not caring about the Panther for some reason. 
I'm not sure why he's going for the room there instead of the Panther. You know, the Panther, which is going to destroy all the Katusha. I mean, it destroyed one, and it's now going to hunt for the others. He is incredibly unlucky, though, as he finds a, uh, a conscript spot that was healing up. So the tank grenade will put him into that Panther's quick pursuit. He is too heavy tank, will realize, oh shit. And uh, so he's going to come back into the base. He's going to be like, yet. And uh, now he is slowly but surely trudging back along with T-3485, still derping in the field and not caring about his friends uh, back at base, so that's not very good. Here comes, however, a nasty Stuka close air support, I think because he's barely spotted the Katusha, you know, and uh, that's not very good. Here comes also a Stuka bombing strike, one of the Katusha almost dies, actually both of them almost died, but they survived. The Panther in the meantime is taking nasty anti-tank gun shells to the face from uh, the resist free field gun, the divisional field gun, that did not die to the uh, bombing run, and here comes finally this to big strong Russia bear to come back around and rear on and hit the hell out of that camper. So, Ursines superior to felines, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be the end of uh, that, I would say, because... Ontario does pick the uh, Jaeger armor, but it's a little too late. He's getting out a second Panzer, but the Allies are about to get the triple cap. You know, they can hold the right side, they hold the center with the Katusha, they can cap both of those territories. And then once uh, once they have triple cap, they have 200 rupees to drain. That would mean three and a half minutes, roughly, of uh, triple cap juice. Panzer vs. Garage, not going to be great impact. And yeah, just by virtue of the infantry, I think that the Allies can really secure this, but they've also got superior armor, so I wouldn't say that there's any... Uh, I wouldn't say that there's any doubt as to the outcome. Uh, loses the battery shock troops. That's just sad. But that's gonna be the end of that. So I would say the bigger mistakes of the Germans were we uh, making like, how they use their camp, of course, had some problems. But I would say the doctrinal non-play, as in uh, they didn't pick any, really came back to hurt them. I'm guessing that that's something that they were trying to do, just like trying to refrain from using. We have lost one of our armored vehicles. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so despite the problems, I would say that if they had, like, for example, an elephant at some point, they could have countered this to have time really easily. So that would have been, that would have been pretty easy going if they had that. And uh, yeah, they just had the problem of the fact that they didn't have any, like, I don't know, any way to counter the S2. They didn't have really uh, enough to survive the Katusha, the repeated Katusha, and deciding to go for those Panzerwerfers, it just did not work out. I'm not sure if it was a mistake or not, because I, I think it was a good idea to go for the Panzerwerfers, they just, they just didn't work out for them. It just, it was just a little bit derpy. Yeah, Panzerwerfers, I mean, they, they're either really, really strong or really, really worthless in my experience, so you never really quite know when you buy them. And uh, yeah, other than that, Ally is playing very well, so yeah, it was a pleasure to see you. want to thank you all for watching, hope you've enjoyed, I'll see you soon, and uh, have a good day.